Trudy Bedrock Season 3 Finale The Final Chapter Prologue If you had a TARDIS and could travel anywhere in time and space, where would you go? Would you travel the world discovering all of the amazing events that have occurred on our planet from the dawn of time until its inevitable destruction? Or would you venture further away, travelling through space in search of alien life or other habitable planets? You could, and probably would, go literally anywhere in the universe, ever. But not Mr. Onion. When Mr. Onion stole Jack's TARDIS, he wasn't remotely interested in travelling or trying to better himself with new cultures and understandings. And he wasn't remotely bothered about seeing what things might have been like throughout history, or what they might be like in the future. He had his mind set on one very specific place and one very specific time. Mr. Onion, for reasons he couldn't quite understand himself, desired peace. More than anything else in the world, more than diamonds or stickers, his ultimate true desire was for a peaceful, quiet life. Which, for such a loud and obnoxious character, is quite a difficult idea to wrap your head around. But he did. All he wanted was to live a humble life, in a nice house without noisy neighbours or distractions of interfering server members, and he knew exactly how he was going to achieve that lifestyle. On entering Jack's TARDIS, he set the coordinates to the exact time and place of where he wanted to be, and off he went. Hurtling through the vortex of time and arriving exactly when and where he'd intended to. Which he considered quite impressive, considering he'd never driven a TARDIS before. However, he shrugged off this amazing feat as just yet another level of his incredible skillfulness and left the TARDIS. Chapter 1 Family Matters While Mr. Onion was searching for a peaceful life, Big Chicken was in space searching for Foxy with his wife. They'd not been gone long at this point in time and they had no idea where or when they were going. Like the TARDIS, the Chucknet ship that Jack had stolen for them could also travel in time and space. However, they didn't actually know where in time and space to go. Geraldine had spent hours searching through the ship's systems looking for where it might have come from in hopes that the ship was built in the same place that the infinite chucks were holding Foxy captive. But all the ship seemed to contain was a bunch of basic operating procedures as well as the entire back catalogue of Foxy no Tail videos right up to the end of Truly Bedrock Season 2. There was nothing after this, and considering he should have been a few weeks into recording Season 3 at this point, she thought there might be at least a couple of videos to look through, in order to give them at least some clue as to what Season 3 might look like, in hopes that that would give them at least some clue as to where to go. Whilst Geraldine had been looking through the database, Big Chicken had been being Big Chicken, pressing every single button he could find on the ship. What does this button do? he asked while pressing it. Suddenly, a jet of ice-cold milk shot out of a dispenser where a bucket should have been and poured all over the floor. Oops, he said. Oh, what's this button, though? He asked again midway through pressing another button he'd found. Big Chicken then jumped as a robotic-sounded voice reverberated around the ship. Ship will self-destruct in T minus three minutes. Please say the cancellation phrase to abort. What did you do this time? shouted Geraldine from the front of the ship, knowing full well what he'd done. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to, replied Big Chicken. You never do. What are we going to do? asked Big Chicken worriedly. I have no idea, she replied, frantically searching through the computer system for some sort of manual override. If you hadn't been, well, you, then we wouldn't be in this mess again, she barked at him. I didn't mean to, it was an accident, sobbed Big Chicken in reply. Yeah, okay, said Geraldine, dismissing him completely as she skimmed through the file system. The voice of the ship engaged again. Self-destruct sequence aborted. What? Said Big Chicken, surprised it had suddenly stopped. Well, I suppose that makes sense. This is a chuck ship, after all. You can only say, yeah, and okay. So the phrase had to be one of those, I guess. Phew, said Big Chicken, relieved that it was over. So now what? Now we go home, replied Geraldine softly. Home? Yeah, home. We need to keep you away from trouble and find somewhere to settle down until we can figure out exactly where we're supposed to be heading. Okay, but where is home? asked Big Chicken nervously. A few moments later, the ship's main door lowered down to the surface of the moon. Geraldine took Big Chicken by the hand and walked him down the ramp to the surface. This is home? asked Big Chicken. I don't know another place we spend more time together than up here on the moon. But you'll get moon sick, worried Big Chicken. I'm not sure about that, but something else has had me throw it up the last couple of mornings. Big Chicken completely missed the subtle hint she tried to give him. Oh no, are you okay? Did you get some kind of weird space sickness from the spaceship? 
She reached out for his hand and held it against her stomach. No, big guy. I'm not sick. I'm... Geraldine was interrupted by a beeping noise coming from the ship. Wait, what's that? She said, rushing back up the ramp to the cockpit. There was a new message written on the main control screen that read, Number one has been activated. Timeline initialized. We will avert the prophecy. Below the message was a small button that looked like a video play symbol. What is the button? said Big Chicken excitedly. You and your buttons, joked Geraldine. Okay, here goes. The large screen at the back of the ship turned on and started playing a brand new Foxy no Tail episode. Hello and welcome back to a brand new season of Truly Bedrock. Is this season three? asked Big Chicken hastily. I think so, said Geraldine. But something's off, she exclaimed. The videos they'd watched from the system before had all played back fine, but for some reason this video was coming through more garbled and broken, like it wasn't quite tuned in correctly. It could be the signal strength. If we could get closer to where it's coming from, maybe it'll clear up a bit, she continued. Can you find where it's coming from? That's probably where Foxy is. I'm pretty sure it is, but the signal's so weak, I can't get a proper read on it. It's almost like we're receiving a reflection of the signal, rather than receiving the signal directly. You're so smart, my love. So what do we do? Asked Big Chicken, staring at her with wide eyes in total awe. Well, we could try moving the ship and see if we can get a better... All of a sudden, the video stopped playing. What happened? Said Big Chicken. I don't know. It's gone. The signal had completely vanished without a trace. Geraldine launched the ship back off the moon's surface and flew around searching for any sign of the signal, but it was no use. The signal had completely gone, leaving Geraldine and Big Chicken none the wiser to where it came from, or where they needed to go. Eventually, Geraldine gave up and landed the ship back down on the moon. She took Big Chicken's hand again and walked him back down the ramp to the surface. I'm sure it'll come back again at some point. We just need to be ready for it when it does. In the meantime, let's make the most of our new home and build a beautiful place for our family.